adjusting your clutch lever. Why do we do this? The clutch lever disengages the clutch, allowing you to shift. You want to adjust it properly so it fully engages and disengages. If it's too tight when you let it out, it'll slip. And if it slips, it'll wear your clutch out and you won't go anywhere. If it's too loose, it won't allow you to shift. How do you know when it's right? First of all, we have to make sure that we take it to your owner's manual. Here we have a 2017 Honda Rebel. Your spec will be in there. I always recommend going to spec because this is for your specific bike. There are some general rules of thumb that I will go through um, if maybe you don't have your owner's manual. But um, you want there to be a little free play, um, but always check your bike's owner's manual, like I said, for specs. So, here on mine, it says free play at the clutch lever is going to be 3 8 to 3 16 of an inch. A machinist rule is going to be the most accurate, but most of us, unless you're a mechanic, you don't have a machinist rule. So we can use a tape measure or a small ruler. So I'll take you through this. Um, one of the big things that you want to look at for two is you want to check your clutch cable. You want to see if there's any signs of wear on this because adjusting it, if it's worn down or if there's something wrong with it, isn't going to do very good. It's not going to do you any good. All right, so general rule of thumb, if you are able to stick, so if you look at this lock nut here and this screw, if you can fit a nickel in there, of free play is about your general rule of thumb. However, we're going to be specific. Don't come for me in the comments. If, um, so you can check it here, which is what I usually like to do, or if you'll notice in your owner's manual, they will have you checking out here as well. So here's your area of free play. You'll feel it when you squeeze it in just to the point where you meet resistance. So that's about where, about where you'll be measuring from. So if you get your tape measure out, you probably want to start from the one and just use that as your first inch here because it can be hard with a big tape measure like this to get it accurate. And when you're dealing with such small precise measurements, you want to get pretty precise because we're talking millimeters or you know parts of an inch. So what you want to do, like I said, if you start it right at that one inch, so you can have a clear measurement and right when it grabs, that's where they're asking you to adjust it to. Okay. So if you start at your one inch, that's where it grabs. Same deal. If you're up here and you put it on your inch, you start it there. That's where you're going to see. But like I said, machinist rule, that'll get you the most accurate. If you use a tape measure, just look really well at it. Otherwise, if you want to keep a nickel in your pocket even, make sure that you can fit a nickel in there. And like I said, you're looking for that point where you squeeze it 
and you, it starts resisting. That's where you want to adjust it to. Always look at your owner's manual for specs. Next up, we're going to be checking your brake fluid. Now, bikes are either going to have hydraulic brakes, that'll be what you most likely have on your bike, or you're going to have a brake cable. Most bikes switched to hydraulic brakes in the 80s. Almost all bikes had it by the 90s. So, there's going to be a fluid window on the front of your bike, so you want to locate that. It's usually by the brakes, okay? It's usually by the, by the front brakes here. You want to check it with your bike level so you can get the most accurate reading. So you want to grab your brake and then you want to get your bike up, okay? You can very easily just straddle the front tire and have someone else check it for you, but you can see, I mean, even if you give it a little wiggle, brake fluid is full. You always want your brake fluid full. If you are driving a bike with a brake cable, again, check your owner's manual. It adjusts similarly the way we did your clutch. All right, so checking your brakes, more specifically your brake pad. First of all, you want to make sure that your brakes are working, for one thing. Um, you want to make sure that um, you check the pad um, from below the caliper or wherever you can best see the pad. Now, I can't zoom in close enough to get you there, but you want to take a flashlight, um, or if you're not in your home garage, like me, or if you are, I guess, um, and you've got the bike up on a stand. So you want to just look wherever you can best see the brake pad, and they've got wear indicators on there. If they're worn to the wear indicator, it's time for a set of new brake pads. Um, same for the rear. Usually they're positioned on the rear right, um, same deal. If they're worn, if the pads themselves, the pads themselves will have a wear indicator on there and if they're worn to that wear indicator, get yourself a new set of brake pads. Alright, to check your oil, you're going to be able to do this one of two ways. Either there will be a dipstick that you'll be looking at, otherwise you'll be looking at this fluid indicator window that's right underneath the engine here and the side cover. So here's where your filter on this specific bike, this is where the filter is sitting. We'll do a separate video on how to change oil for you in the future. But here's where your filter is. Here is your fluid window. Again, you want to make sure that you are on your bike, which I'll do. You want to make sure it's level so that you're getting an accurate reading. So there's your fluid window. There will be marks where you want the fluid between those specific marks. If you have a bike with a dipstick, same deal. You're going to want to pull out the dipstick. There will be little indicator marks to make sure that your oil is at the proper level. Um, if you need to put some oil in, check and see what kind of oil your bike uses. Again, refer to your owner's manual to make sure that you're putting in the right oil because if you don't, you're going to wreck your engine. You don't want to do that. All right. Now we're going to be checking your bike's uh, chain drive. So you're either going to be having a shaft drive bike or a chain bike. Um, this one is a chain, we'll go to the shaft drive next, but you want to again refer to your owner's manual for specs. If you just have a tape measure, because again you're at home, uh, machinist rule is always, um, it's always your first choice in how to measure things. Um, however, if you have just your tape measure, you want to prop your tape measure up and then wherever you get it started, um, that's where you're going to be measuring from. So you want to go ahead and lift the chain to your spec. And that's how you do that. Alright, up next we're going to check your tire pressure and then we're also going to check your tire tread. So if you don't already, Get yourself one of these little tools. They're just this uh, digital tire pressure and tread depth gauge. They're really handy. They're not that expensive. Um, so what you want to do is you want to check your uh, owner's manual or the tire manufacturer that you went through if it's not the tires that the bike originally came from. You want to look for um, the grade of pressure, so PSI. You want to make sure that you are doing that as a spec as well. It'll just make sure the tire will run smoothly for you, efficiently, and you're not going to wear them down as quickly. 
Um, so to check your tire pressure, super self-explanatory. Just put your gauge on here. Turn on your tool, and it'll give you the PSI um, and adjust it accordingly. And then to check your tire tread, so this has this handy little tool on the side. It's a digital one again, so you stick it in there. It'll give you a digital reading of your tire tread. And then um, otherwise, you want to make sure that when the tire gets worn down to the indicator, so what's an indicator? It indicates that it's time for a new tire. Um, there are these bars that sit in between here, and when the tire tread starts to get worn down to those, it'll have these little indicators. It'll say either TWI or it'll show one of these little triangles. Once you do that, it is incredibly important that you don't delay. You get yourself a new set of tires because we're riding on two tires here. We're not riding on four. So that obviously makes it a little more dangerous when you blow a tire and you're flying 75 uh, down the highway. So tires are very important. Make sure you check them and check them often. Next up, you want to make sure to check your lights. So we have our high and low beam. We also have our turn signals. You want to make sure that those are all working properly as well as your brake light. If you want to get somebody to help you with this, you can. You don't have to. It might make it a little easier. So just get on your brake light. Make sure it's working. As well as your rear brake. If any of the bulbs need to be changed, it is important to do that sooner rather than later. There are some laws regarding bikes that don't have to have turn signals. You just want to make sure that your bike is running optimally and that everything is working as it should. So as soon as you notice that a uh, light is out, make sure you get a new bulb right away. Alright, next up is going to be checking your air filter. I'm not going to take this bike apart for the sake of time. Um, it's right under this side cap here. Um, why do we want to be checking our air filter? Well, you want to make sure that your engine is running at peak performance. Um, it's just important for the longevity of the bike. I mean, the engine is really the heart and soul of your machine. So, how do we know that your um, air filter needs to be replaced? A general rule of thumb is with every oil change, again, refer to your owner's manual for specs on how many miles. Um, if you're checking it though, you want to for sure check it with every oil change. Um, if you notice that it's grimy, it's full of bugs, it, I mean, you can tell. You can tell when it's time for a new air filter. So be on the lookout for that, and that is checking your air filter. All right, um, last thing here, we're going to check your throttle cables um, that control, of course, your throttle. Um, you want to make sure there's no signs of wear on them is um, the thing first you want to check. Um, why do we want to make sure these are adjusted? Well, if they're too tight, when you turn the handlebars, it'll cause the bike to rev up, making it unsafe when you turn a corner. If they're too loose, um, it won't ride as smooth, and you possibly won't be able to get to full throttle. So, a little free play, no matter which position you're in, um, no matter which position your handlebars are in. Again, just refer to your owner's manual for specs, but just a little bit of free play. Um, like I said, no matter which position the handlebars are in. Um, so yeah, that is checking your throttle and throttle cables. Alright, so to bring this thing in for a landing, we've taught you how to properly maintain your bike, generally um, what to look for. Um, I know I sound like a broken record, but your owner's manual is going to be key because every bike is a little different. Um, I threw out some general guidelines in there for you. Um, you can go with that, you know, from time to time if you're without your owner's manual for whatever reason. Um, again, it is incredibly important. I know everybody wants to just hop on and go ride, but to make sure that your bike is running at peak performance and the longevity of the bike as well as yourself, you want to make sure that you take the proper care and maintenance protocol for your bikes. And until next time, like, comment, Subscribe, let me know what you guys want to see. Um, happy to throw out any videos that you guys want when it comes to bikes. Um, if there's something you want to learn how to do, if there's questions that you guys have, feel free to leave them in the comments. And until then, keep the rubber side down.